The kinetic molecular theory, or KMT, describes gas particles. It starts by saying that gases are made of tiny particles. Well, yeah, duh, we know that. They're made of atoms and molecules. Okay, not very exciting. Gas particles are far apart from each other, and there's lots of empty space in between. Again, we th I think we know that. Solid particles are much, much closer to each other. Liquids a little farther apart, and gas particles very far apart. We say that gas particles are not attracted to each other. We actually say that they're not repelled by each other either. There's no interaction between them at all, or at least that's what we assume. And I want you to note that they're actually weakly attracted to each other. And we're going to talk about that at the end of this chapter when we talk about the difference between real and ideal gases. Gas particles move very fast and in straight lines. They can't turn corners. They collide with each other and they collide with other objects. And this is how they would change directions. When they collide, these, we say these collisions are elastic. That means that no energy is lost. This is kind of important. Normally when things collide with each other, some of their kinetic energy is lost to uh, heat. But when gas particles collide, we know that there's no energy lost. How do we know this? Well, if particles kept colliding with each other and lost heat or energy a little bit each time, they'd have less and less energy and they'd get slower and slower and slower and finally stop. And, well, gas particles have been around for, you know, like a billion years and they're still colliding with each other. They haven't come to a stop. So we assume that they're elastic. The next thing is that lighter gases move faster. You probably know this as Graham's Law. The rate of a fusion of A compared to the rate of a fusion of B is the square root of the molar mass of B over the square root of the molar mass of A. You'll notice that A and A are in opposite sides here. Okay, B and B. Um, diffusion is when gas particles spread out and mix. Effusion is when the exact same thing happens through a little tiny pinhole. Like that's how um, helium escapes from a helium balloon, for instance. So if we wanted to compare, say, hydrogen and nitrogen at the same temperature, and I wanted to know who's moving faster, you would say, well, hydrogen's moving faster because it's lighter. Well, then I say, well, how much faster? So we can use Graham's Law. So we say the rate of, of hydrogen over the rate of nitrogen. Now, you can do it nitrogen over the hydrogen. Um, I highly recommend that you pick the lighter gas to put on top. It just makes the math easier. So now we've got the square root of the molar mass of nitrogen. Uh, that's 28.02. Square root of the molar mass of hydrogen. So that's 2.02. And if you do that out, you get 3.72. Well, what does that mean? That means that at whatever temperature we're talking about, hydrogen moves, effuses, diffuses, whatever, 3.72 times faster than nitrogen. So we can not only decide who moves faster, but how much faster. We can also look, if we want to, at the same gas, so if I just wanted to look at hydrogen, for instance, I could say, what happens to its speed when I change its temperature? You can't use this second formula comparing two different kinds of gases. That's the first one. But this one does allow you to see what happens if you, looking at the same gas, what happens to the speed when you increase the temperature. So let's say, for instance, um, I want to look at hydrogen at 25 degrees Celsius and at 100 degrees Celsius. First thing I have to do is go ahead and change these to Kelvin. So it's Celsius plus 273. Okay, and that's, so that's 298 Kelvin. 100 plus 273 is 373 Kelvin. Okay, so then I say the speed of B over the speed of A is the square root of 373. Notice in this case, B and B are in the same place, top, A and A are in the same place on the bottom. So 298, so this is going to equal 1.12. Again, what does that mean? It means that hydrogen moves 1.12 times faster 
at 100 degrees Celsius than it did at 25 degrees Celsius. On this last screen, we're going to look at a pretty um, kind of famous graph. Um, it shows the relative number of molecules that have a certain speed. It's designed to show two different things. To show what happens to oxygen at, say, 25 degrees Celsius, you'll notice that most of the molecules are moving at about 400 meters per second. But there's definitely some lower and there's definitely some higher. So we always have to talk about average speeds. Okay, Average speeds, average kinetic energies. Uh, kinetic energy is also called translational energy, by the way. Um, but this also shows that as I increase the temperature, the average temperature, the, I'm sorry, the average speed is going to increase. So it was about 400 here. It's much higher here. But also it becomes much more chaotic. There's a lot more sort of a randomness. They're much more spread out. There's lots of them very high and very low. So the average increases but it also gets a little bit more random.